We got some triple digits in the shop today, but I'm not gonna let that stop us from getting some work done. Right now I'm working on getting the motor nailed down. I got it positioned exactly where I want it, centered in the chassis. We got a two degree drop in the rear. So I made some uh, brackets for the front and for the rear to tie the motor mount plates into the chassis. So with the front, it'll tie into this tube, but picture this on the backside. So I'll go ahead and drill some holes bolt it in and then give it a nice little weld. For the rear, I'll do the same and I'll mount on the back side like this. But you'll notice that the rear uh, motor plate is looking pretty bad. So both of these plates were used off the last build. The front one I can reuse because I'm just gonna trim it and give it a nice shape. For the rear, I'm just using this as a mock-up. I ended up ordering a new plate, but once I get this exactly where I want it with the new holes, I'll go ahead and use this as a template and cut out the new one. So let's go ahead and get to work. Now that I have all the tabs tacked in place, I'm gonna go ahead and outline the back of the motor plates around the tabs. That way I can take the motor plates off, take them to work and cut them out on the bandsaw.
Got the engine set back in place. You notice in the video I was grinding on the engine plates. Well, that's to make clearance for the welds on the tabs. I didn't want the plates sitting on the welds. I wanted it to actually sit on the chassis itself. So I just made sure there was ample clearance so the plates can sit on the chassis. Now you might think we're done, but there's a additional load that happens when running front and mid engine plates is under load, the engine can still rock back and forth. So without putting additional stress on the plates, you wanna run what's called the limit bar. And usually you tie it into either the cylinder head or the block, and then you tie it into the chassis itself. That will help limit that back and forth movement and just less stress on the plates. So what I ended up doing is I made a little plate that will bolt on to where the engine mount goes. And then I got a piece of chromoly tubing and some heim joints and some bungs. So I'm gonna go ahead and fit it up, uh, then set the location of where we'll probably tie into the frame and uh, button it all up. I really like how this limit bar turned out. Once again, I utilized the stock mounting location for the motor mount. Made a plate with a stud, then a chromoly tube with a couple of heim joints on each end. And then I drilled and welded in a weld nut into the frame to accept the bolt, then made some spacers for both sides. Now, my location works for me, but it might not work for you. Since I'm not gonna have any headers going down in that direction, uh, I have nothing to worry about, but you do have to take that into consideration depending on your exhaust setup. Now, speaking of headers, that's probably the reason you clicked on this video due to the thumbnail. Let's go ahead and get the exhaust intake and turbo mocked up and see what we're working with. Now, if this doesn't get you guys excited, I don't know what to tell you. Let's start up top. Got a 102 millimeter throttle body, Holly EFI elbow, custom made to my specs air to water intercooler, utilizes a 1300 horsepower rating core, flanged for a 4500 series intake manifold. Then you got a Holly EFI intake manifold oval port to match the Gen 4 big block Chevy heads. Then you got a Gen 6 454 bottom end, Rebuilt 30 over, gapped for boost, comp cam, comp valve springs and retainers, roller rockers, solid running motor. For the exhaust, nothing to brag here, just some eBay headers. Don't think I'd recommend anybody to use these, or at least on stock heads. It takes a lot of work to get them to fit. That's why the other side is not on yet. 
but I'm still undecided. I might end up making a custom set, but we'll see. Now for everyone's favorite power adder, the turbo. This is a GT55 clone. What can I say? Champagne dreams on a Coors Light budget. 106 millimeter billet wheel, 113 exhaust side. Plenty of turbo for this engine. Super stoked on how it's turning out. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. And that's gonna go ahead and wrap up this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. This was a fun one to make for you guys. We're making a lot of good progress on the Ford. So make sure you like, subscribe, and share with all your friends. And as always, I appreciate you guys checking out this video. And I'll see you next time.